Hey guys, West Coast Arachnids. I'm gonna do a transfer video. Um, this is a video of uh, Lampropelma species born in black. Um, yeah, hopefully this is enough light. That's basically the setup. I'm gonna put you up onto that thing there. Hopefully it doesn't flip the video sideways. It's been doing that. This is like the tenth take. So we'll see if I got it fixed. Anyway, there's a look at Haka. Uh, and hopefully she's got Reiku's babies all through there. She really looks extended in the belly. Awesome. I'll give her a feed later. Anyway, this isn't about her. It's about these guys. So I'm going to put you down and hopefully it doesn't flip upwards. If it does, sorry about that guys. Uh, but this is the last take. <laughs> it's been about... Oh, a good hour of messing with this so far. Alright. Um, this species here, a uh, little bit about it. It's, uh, it's labeled as sexual dimorphism, uh, which means that uh, as they get older, the colors change. The males become a different color from the females and so forth. Uh, now the males tend to start out at about two, two and a half inches, maybe a little larger, depending on the spider, I guess, and environments and all kinds of different things. Uh, but it will uh, eventually start turning browner than the female, and the female will start turning darker. Uh, usually tends to start on the females. Uh, you'll notice that they start getting darker uh, from the tips of their legs up, so at their feet. They'll start getting darker and darker and darker going inwards. So, with that being said, uh, we're going to take these guys out. This species is, ten is an obligate burrower, meaning that they're going to tend to burrow straight down. They're going to want to make their own burrows. Um, you can put a hide in there. You can put whatever in there. Me, I'm just doing like a basic terrestrial setup. Uh, with a little bit deeper substrate that's packed down. Now when it digs, i found that if you... I'll show you here how the depth... It's about halfway. Now, once it starts to dig, it's going to soften that substrate up and it's going to push it up. I found that uh, if you fill it more than halfway full, you're going to end up with substrate right at the top of your lid. As soon as you open it up, the, the webbing is going to catch on the lid and pull up. So this here had hardly any substrate in it when I started, and now it's halfway up. So it's a, a good indication of what they do. And I put this uh, moss in here just for it to hide in for the time being. And it's also um, one of those species that likes to have it moist. Um, they like a damp environment, uh, but not wet uh, by any means. So what I'm going to do with this before I even transfer it is just give this a spray. I'm not going to soak it. This seems like a lot but it's really not that much. This will evaporate within a day or so. <clears throat> but it just gives it something to, uh, you know, if it wants to have a drink while it's hiding uh, it's going to be stressed out, and it's going to lose a little moisture in its body due to that being transferred. I like to fluff it up a little bit, um, just to keep it from being, you know, if it's stuck down to the bottom, more chance that mycelium or mold or fungus is going to grow in there, and I don't want that. Always smell your containers. This one smells like fungus. It smells like a mushroom. Uh, so, the quicker I get it out of here, the better. <clears throat> Move things out of the way. I mean, it, it's probably going to transfer some of the spores. I really am kind of nervous about this, but uh, not not so much for the spider uh, running, which these are very quick. But for the fact that it smells like fungus, and um, it is kind of closed off in here and here. Uh, there's webbing there, and that uh, is a sign that it might be molting. 
Now all of this in here is garbage. It's going in the garbage. I do not reuse this stuff. You can't clean it. Uh, you can attempt to, but there's not enough in here to worry about. And it really, if you can't um, afford to go out and get a, a $5 brick every now and again of substrate, then you shouldn't be caring for these kind of animals. Um, it, it, don't, it doesn't take a lot of money to care for these guys. But uh, they do need um, certain things. Uh, it's very, very inexpensive compared to most pets. For the most part, you just stick them in there, and if all goes well, you don't even have to touch it. So this could cost, that's that's right there, about 10 cents worth of substrate and a little bit of moss. So it's not expensive. Uh, the enclosure costs more than anything. And that there's probably about, I think it was about, I think I got three for a buck at the time. So, yeah, next to nothing. There she, here she is. So, what I'm going to do, I'm going to try and tickle it out with the blunt end of this. I don't want to use the tongs. And that's right there. Shows you right there. This is old world species. It's potent. And it goes straight into aggressive, or not aggressive, but a defensive stance. Um, and it's simply trying to say, hey, bugger off, I don't want you near me. But it will bite you. <laughs> and even at this size, it, it's potent, and they'll, that, those little fangs will go into you. Sorry, little guy, but you have to come out of there. Sometimes, when they're like this, they will just grab a hold of the soft part there. So you notice that it's something that he cannot bite into. Sorry about my arm in the way. There we go. Get this away from there. See you run straight for the moss. Beautiful, beautiful tea. Sorry guys, I just I gotta get that into the garbage right away. It's something that I don't want in the room. With the other teas around. If it's got fungus in it, I want it gone. I want it out of here. And that's the best thing to do is get get rid of anything that smells like fungus. Don't spread it around the house. It's already been in here. It's been opened. So just take it out and garbage it once the tea is transferred. And it's so hard to tell. But uh, let's get you down there for a better look. Just look at that. That is awesome. And a lot of the old world uh, burrowers are like this. Now, as they grow older, they may tend to go towards um, a typical terrestrial type uh, tarantula and they'll just sit up on top, maybe web a bit. Um, but these guys will go down, they'll dig, they'll web their own hole up. Once he's got that situated, I'm not going to be misting it like this a lot, especially a substrate. I'm just going to, if it needs moisture, I'll mist the, uh, the moss only. This is not a tarantula in the wild. This is a tarantula in your care. Now, there is a huge difference. Uh, some people say you need to keep it the way it is in the wild. That is... The biggest mistake people can make, in my opinion, if you really want to try, I mean you can, but in a container that's as big as my hand, and that's about how big it is, maybe seven or eight inches long by six inches wide, um, you're not going to be able to recreate nature. You can't recreate the biodiversity of what they live in in the wild. It just can't happen. You can put some springtails in there. You know, that may keep um, things cleaned up a bit. They'll eat like dead 
cricket parts or any leftover bolus um, if they can get to it. Uh, but generally, along with those is going to come mites. Uh, they'll eat the mites. Um, springtails, any isopods like uh, pill bugs, things like that, they'll eat them. But best to just have your spider in there and keep it there like that and uh, just make sure that it's okay and it's getting its food and that you clean up after it, clean the feces out, clean any dead bugs out of there, any leftover feeders, uh, don't let them stay in there alive, things like that. <clears throat> um, throwing ice pods in there and keeping them more, like say keeping the moss a little damp or keeping an edge of it a little damp is great. Um, just be careful. Stick your nose in there and smell it once in a while. If it smells like fungus or mold or mushrooms, transfer your spider. Put it into brand new stuff with a very clean enclosure. Get it out of there. Um, he's going to have fungus spores on him, so he may transfer it over. Now, I'm going to let that enclosure dry out completely so that it doesn't give any mycelium a chance to catch in there and, and take hold. Uh, water dish in there, which I haven't put in yet, but I will. I'll give you an overview look of them both once I'm done. Uh, very important water dish. Always have one. Let's grab the other spider. If you can fit a water dish in there, as you can see there's one in here, put it in. I can't stress that enough that people don't put it in. They say their tarantula is going to die, it's going to drown, or something like that. You're not going to drown your tarantula. Ever. <coughs> um, I've got. I went. I believe I went over that in another video. But um, spiders are very adaptable, and you know these guys that live in lands in, in lands where it's moist all the time, especially like this this one this species itself. Of, there are certain times where they get flooded out and they'll sit in their burrow and wait for the water to go, to go away. And if it stays too long, then they'll abandon their burrow and look for something else. I just want to find out. See, this one I don't smell any mold in at all. He's right there. Hey, little guy. You gonna come out easy for us? Anyway, that's my rant on, on that. Just the information. Um, if you have any questions, or if you disagree, post a comment down below. Uh, I'd love to hear what you have to say. Remember, kids watch this channel, so please keep it G-rated, or at least PG. I'm just trying to get a look. This one may be a little darker than the other one. I believe it is. So I may have a male and a female here. That's awesome. And see, right away, he wants to dig down. We're going to say she. Out of hope. I know you know where your holes are. See, they always have two ways in and out their burrow. <clears throat> in case one becomes um, a hostile environment from a predator or the flooding is just too much and they can get away the other way. There's always another escape route. Come on, I'm going to have to uh, remove his burrow on him. And by that I mean all that web can come out. 
and go into the garbage bucket. And they'll even tuck themselves away on the side of the web. So try to remove as much as you can. You can see all the web in there. That The whole tunnel was complete web. Now, <clears throat> when they're webbed up like that underground, they're not as wet as the substrate or the soil around them. They are getting humid air in there. That means that there's moisture in the air, um, but they're not actually touching a wet surface. This is important. Uh, when it says humid, it does not mean um, wet ground. Humid means moisture in the air. So if you're soaking the ground to make it humid, that's a mistake. Um, you should stop doing that. And if you need to make it humid, I'll give you a tip here in a minute. Come on, little guy. He was giving me a third posture. She, 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 she. Come on. Missing a leg. She is. She's missing a front leg. I have no idea. That must have happened in the last molt. Uh, but it does look like they are ready to molt again. So we'll see that leg grow back. <clears throat> it takes usually at, about, at this size about three or four molts before the legs fully grow, maybe three molts. Um, I did have one of my Lazidor difficilis lose a leg in a molt and he's perfectly fine today. In fact, it's one of my largest tees and that's the one that uh, molted last. And the video was set out maybe a week or so ago, three, four, five videos back. Um, <clears throat> I can't remember what it's called, but if you look back, you'll see it. This is a I've only got two of these guys. <clears throat> I did have one and I believe I lost that other, another one that I lost due to fungus. And that's the dangers of having these um, old world diggers, uh, the burrowers. They are very hard to take care of. Uh, I do not recommend these to beginners because of the difficulty of care and um, the simple fact that uh, they are old world and if they do bite uh, you could be in for a world of trouble. They're not a tarantula to mess around with and if you're allergic to their bite uh, that's even more reason. If you're allergic to them, you should always have an EpiPen on hand or just not have them at all. Now, I'm kind of happy right now. This is kind of awesome. We're going to get some lids and I'll explain why. Now, well, you know what? I got an idea here. There we go. Maybe this will give you a hint. Now, this is not 100%, but I do believe this is a male and this is a female due to the coloring. As I said in the beginning, this is a sexual dimorphic um, species, meaning that uh, they have a different color between the sexes and they start showing around this size. Now I need to get this guy to actually move so that you can see the difference and hopefully it's viewable on this garbage camera. That right there is what I believe to be a male. And that right there is what I believe to be female. Uh, 
Now, at this size, it's still hard to tell, so I could be very wrong on this. Uh, this is just a suspicion. But if you look really closely, I don't know if you can see it at the tip of the leg there, the front leg that's sticking out, it's more of a brown color on the foot. Not this whole leg here, but the one in front here. Sorry about the shaky. You can see that it's more of a light color. And on this one here, they are much more dark. Let me get them out of there. I don't know if you can see the difference. But the abdomens are a completely different color. So the other legs in the abdomen on this one are just light brown almost. And this one is just pretty much dark all the way around. So that's exciting. Hopefully <coughs> that's just not juvenile colors still showing. Um, and that there is a male and a female there. That would be awesome. And I'm not sure why this one here lost its leg, but nine times out of ten, it's due to a bad molt. And seven times out of ten from a bad molt, they usually die. <clears throat> so that is awesome news in another respect uh, that they may be male or female and that that one did survive its uh, loss of limb and hopefully in the next molt we'll see that it's starting to grow back and that it did not die uh, the next molt is very crucial and that it comes out um, with a partially new grown leg and then it, there's no deformities uh, because that can really complicate the, the uh, molt after that. Uh, so in saying that the next couple of molts, maybe even three, uh, are really going to determine um, the well-being of this tarantula. Anyway, um, that's enough with these guys. So that's Lampropalma species Borneo Black. Beautiful species. We'll do an update on them. And at the same time here, we're going to uh, take a look at um, my Ephibibus uh, Sionathus. Uh, such a hard name to say. I need to find somewhere to put these guys now. Temporarily, right over here. So we're going to get a quick look at this one. So this is what I plan to do with all my future uh, how rehousings, which there's going to be quite a few of them. Is show you an update on these guys um, in the next transfer video. You can see there is his uh, little tunnel is really coming along nicely. It goes almost all the way to the other side. There is an escape route uh, over here. Very hard to see. And they keep it that way for a reason. They have their main burrow entrance and a, and a getaway. So what we're going to do is I'm probably not going to get much of a view on this but we're going to attempt to feed it. This is the first attempt at feeding this guy since it's uh, rehousing. It's been in here for about five days now I guess. You can't really see much so I'll, uh, I'll just toss this guy in here and we'll see what happens. I want to get an appropriate sized worm. Oh, it went right in there. I can see it still.
about the shakiness. I'm just trying to find a, a good spot where you guys can actually see. Oop. Almost lost the whole thing. I don't think you're going to get a chance to see this guy at all. Like I said, the last time I saw it before the rehousing was, it was three quarters of an inch. It was tiny. But I know this guy just molted not too long ago. I can see um, the worm is literally right here. There it is. What I'm going to do is this one's a bit small so I'm going to put this one back and I'm going to get a bigger one out except for the only difference is we're going to maim this one and I'll do that off camera for your non-viewing pleasure okay now this one will no longer pose a problem <clears throat> uh, to the spider it will not kill it it can't uh, it's impossible now as it's no longer alive <clears throat> but I'll leave that in there and I'll check on it tomorrow to make sure that it's been eaten if it has not been eaten it's coming out of there um, that's a definite attractant of mites and mold and fungus so you don't want to leave that more than 12 hours so in the morning I'm gonna remove that All right, where were you? you were over here <clears throat> and I believe that's it I was gonna show you something else but I'll do that for another video one's already quite long and there's the one there that lost its leg that molted just recently so that's kind of an update on that one these ones still need to be rehoused I just found that you know with the mold smell that I could smell in the Lampropelma I needed to get them out of there um, right away I didn't want to have any issues and it's a good thing I believe they're in pre-molt so they're not going to be getting fed until after they molt but I'm glad they're in their new houses. They'll dig up right away and build a molt bed and molt. I'm hoping the moisture should uh, induce that. Oh, we got this guy here. We'll sign off with a view on this guy. Nighttime view of him crawling around. Salmoporus arminium male. Another one with a little bit of sexual dimorphism. Um, <clears throat> in their last molt especially the the males are a little bit uh, more of a silverish silverish brown color uh, than and the, they still have the coloration on the legs and whatnot but they're not dark like the uh, adult females another one poking his feet out these guys need to be rehoused as well Okay, guys, that's that for now. Y'all take care. Have a great day, and bye for now.